Welcome back, Zero K fans. This is Shadow Fury 3 with another exhibition match. This is going to be the last one for tonight. Actually, the last one for 2014 because the year is about to be over and next year is 2015. Which I don't know what to think because everyone's been making Back to the Future 2 jokes. And while I do like that movie, for whatever reason, my. My reference point for 2015 is Evangelion. Yeah, I know. I'm such a weeb. Anyway, <laughs> I'm sorry. I, l I think it's a good show. No, seriously, I think it's a good show. I actually quite like it. But that's beside the point. The point is, is that I do kind of associate 2015 with Evangelion, which makes no sense because of the fact that there is no way that the events of that show could come to pass, thank God, because that would be horrible since that's basically the end of the world. I don't want that to happen. I mean, I, I said I liked the show. I didn't want to say I'd live there. <laughs> it's a bit of a difference. But yeah, so... I didn't say it was the best show ever. I just said it's good. Everyone else I talked to seems to think it's horrible. Sorry, Ramark's saying it's overrated, but it's fine. It's like, yes. It's definitely hyped up, and there are better shows out there. I think it's good. I don't think it's the best show ever. I have watched better shows. But I think it's a lot better than people give it credit for. I don't think it's as good as people give it hype for. But I still like it. But yeah, that's what I associate with 2015. Even though Back to the Future 2 is a better 2015. Which frankly is not saying much. <laughs> yeah, I, there's... Anyway. Discussion about... Ja <laughs> discussion about animation aside. To the game, Reinhardt and Flipstep on Wanderlust. So this map, I think it's shown up before for people. I, I mean, it has been on the stream a few times. Strong center, you got plus 9 in the center. Otherwise, it's basically plus 1.8, basically plus 2 around. Slightly stronger center, fairly strong sides. You have a couple easy start points. You have the center, you have the south. You could also start in the north. It's, it is a west and east box setup. Or actually, it's more like this. But yeah. This section is a little bit harder to defend because of the fact that you are on low ground. This is a much easier section to defend, which Flipstep has taken. Rymark, on the other hand, who is a bit more of the jump bot specialist, they are, they have honed their jump bot play into an art form very nearly. Or at least, as far as I know, I've played them, they're quite strong. Let's see how much they have honed into an art form. They're definitely massive fans of the jump bot factory. So, not without further ado, let us begin. Rymark is... Well, Rymark starting with probably with Pyro. Okay, Pyro for Rymark. Three Pyros for Flipstip. I think Rymark's going to probably go for Pyro Puppy Mix, not knowing what their opponent's up to. It's a fairly strong early game mix. And the one downside of starting in the center here is that it makes the third Metal Extractor a little bit harder to get to. I know I mentioned the three Metal Extractor thing. That's important for all these for all those people who are new wondering, why is three Metal Extractor such a big deal? Well, it's because, by default, this is pretty normal. Actually, it's usually plus two. Plus two is generally what you have for each metal spot in 0k. The commander gives plus four, each metal spot gives plus two, which means three metal spots gives plus ten. With plus ten, you can run your factory, because the factory drains minus ten, so does the commander. But you can run your factory on its own, and it'll run at full power. Regardless of your reserves, like you have enough income that you can spend all of it, and your factory will run at full power. That's a big deal. Once you get two power plants as well, that's the other thing you need to do. Because the commanders start out with six plus six power. Solar collectors are plus two each. So at this point, Rymark and Flipstip both have enough energy and metal in order to be able to run the factory full blast if their commander's not building anything. Yeah, a bit of a basic thing there. But there are people who have come in who are new, who haven't watched these cats before. And for their sake, that is why three metal extractors is a big deal. Or rather, why plus six metal is a big deal, but usually it's three metal extractors that ensures plus six. Or plus six on the ground with plus four from the commander. So Flipstip did attack a little bit earlier on, didn't really do much damage. Rymark defended against it. Both players have retreated the pyros. Flipstip having repaired it a bit sooner, and Rymark going to be apparently not repairing at all. Rather out there. And a couple of puppies coming in as well. This is completely expected. Now, puppies are a little bit tricky to run against pyros, but they actually aren't too bad. The pyro range, it is longer than the puppy. Right, the puppies, 
don't have much of a chance to survive. So if the pyros are coming with puppy support and the pyros are taking the shots for the puppies, that'll work beautifully. The puppies will be able to deal like 450 damage a shot, I think. No, 410 damage a shot. Two of them will kill off a pyro. So with puppy support, this pyro would win this fight rather than having to retreat, jump away, and still manage to kill a pyro. No, die. Never mind, it dies. Yeah, if those puppies had been there for support, that would have been better, which is a little bit surprising that they weren't. I think Reimark must have been a bit more focused on setting up their economy. That defense worked out fairly well, though. Two pirates for the cost of one, and all the reclaim inside Reimark's territory, so Reimark remains ahead as a result of that attack. Flip steps a little bit behind. Expanding to the south, while Reimark expanding a bit to the center. Surprisingly, Flip step not expanding to the north as well. Their commander is, in fact... Wait, where's the... Oh, the commander's going to the center. Okay, so they want to get the three medal spot. The plus three medal. And they want to take the territory. Probably want to take the south expansion as well. Like, all the metal extractors over to the south. That would be pretty powerful. A little bit hard, though. I, I would not recommend that. The north one is safe. The north one, Flipstip, is not going to go for The south one, Flipstip can march right into there. Like, this is bot pathable. Red means pathable. Purple means unpathable. So that is bot pathable. Those pyros could walk up, let alone jump up, and threaten it. So trying to take the south side is extremely challenging. I would, I would say it's basically, if you can take it and hold it, you've already won the game. The north side, however, is free. I mean, even normally, it's easier for the east player to take the north side because of the both pathable sides. And similarly for the south, so the west player to take the south side. Although I do often see the east player taking the south side and vice versa. A little bit unusual, but on paper, it would seem more, it would seem easier to take the north side. Okay, Rymark pointing out, pointing back about puppies, and since I can't show Hitbox Chat in the stream because of technical reasons, saying that puppies are finicky with defending as pyros, they both must move towards each other, and puppies are more effective, are most effective at preventing pyros from rushing defenses or jumping into surprise attacks. They're a defensive unit. That makes sense. I mean, like I said, they have shorter range, they don't last as long, they need other things to be taking the damage to actually be able to hit the pyros. So they want to be in a position where the pyros are moving towards them, and the pyros are shooting at something else. So I can totally see where Reimark's coming from. However, in that particular case, that was a defensive situation. So I'm still a bit surprised the puppies were not used, as they are currently trying to be used. I'm also a bit surprised they weren't used... Yeah, it's like... What does Reimark have for radar? Okay, Reimark has no radar, that's why. They don't have as much knowledge. Flipstep, on the other hand, has nearly perfect knowledge of what's going on in Reimark's base. I'm surprised why Reimark hasn't built radar yet. That's... I think Reimark might have lost it. I, I I, can only assume Reimark lost their radar, although they would have built it up here. I don't know. It's a little unusual. And yes, indeed, Flipstep is going for the south side. <laughs> They're trying to take the south side of the map, not going for the north side at all. And another puppy goes down, a bunch of free puppy kills. Or is that free? No, I think one one of the pyros, a pyro died. One of Flipstep, two of Flipstep's pyros died, actually, so it wasn't completely free. That did work out. Got rid of a few of Flipstip's pyros, but Flipstip is still ahead militarily very slightly. That being said... Oh. Reimark pointing out they are a bad player who makes radar... Wait. Oh, sloppy? Oh, slowly. <laughs> right, yeah, they... Okay, that makes sense. They put their right hand to the side. They make radar I don't know how to pronounce semicolons. Anyway. Rymark, despite insisting on me trying to find a way of pronouncing semicolons on the fly, is able to get rid of Flipster's pace here. This is exactly what I said would happen. Pyro comes in from the south, or sorry, comes in from the southwest, takes out the south, tears it apart at basically no threat. And is able to tear apart this entire expansion. The north, however, is perfectly safe. I mean, Flipstip could take that and it would basically not be threatened for the entire game. Whereas this south expansion here has been torn to shreds with one pyro and a jack. And the jack was more of a luxury than anything. I mean, it's helpful because pyros are coming in, but really, this pyro, that did the work. That tore this apart. That's forcing the commander to retreat. Try to take out the jack. And the jack has his jump. Jumping into the commander won't be able to kill it, but we'll be able to deal a fair amount of damage. She's gonna do it again. Will it be able to No, it won't be able to kill. There's too much damage coming in. Pyro's coming in, and... Oh, it does! Barely in his death throws. The Jack is the last shot off. Takes out the commander, and that... 
hero Pyro dies in a blaze of glory as Pyros are want to do. The only way Pyros know how to die. However, like I said, it, it tore this apart. I mean, that, that put Reinmark back. Reinmark was having a bit of a tough time there, especially economically. That definitely put Reinmark back in the game. That was a very powerful assault. I know that Reinmark is really out of the game, but this is this is a great edge. They needed that. They needed to do that, and they did that. Now, Reinmark still hasn't built radar. That was just off of intuition. <laughs> yeah, Reinmark saying Pyros are not friendly with their fire. This is true. Zero K is a game with friendly fire, which, as players to the game very rapidly find out, is not friendly. Especially when you're playing Amphib. Ducks... Ducks do not get along with each other. Used to be ducks killed each other in one shot. Now it's two shots. That that was more of a buff than a nerf, in all honesty. <laughs> Reducing duck damage was a buff. <laughs> because they can actually work in groups now. However, Flips themselves a great position. They have their pyros all on the side here. A little bit tricky for Reinmark to push in. This Jack, once again, coming in here, and that should be able to deal a fair amount of damage. Should be able to take care of about two or three of them. It's going to be tough, but it's going to be possible. The North, however, that I don't think the Pyros are going to attack. All six of them would be able to take it out with heavy casualties. Any less than that, they they would lose for no reason. And actually, even this, the Jack Gillers move forward and cause the defenders to attack. And that's all it really needs. However, even with that, the Jack able to get some shots and take out a Pyro, take out a second Pyro. And Frigger coming in to help re help die. That's all the Frigger's going to be doing. He's not repairing anything. Oh, but the Jack saves at the last minute. It's still taking a bit of damage. It is still on fire. Still needs some repair. I don't think it's going to live. The Jack will live. The re the Freaker will not. The Freaker dies. Oh, Brower pointed out the Jack is baiting the Pyros. That was all it was trying to do was bait the Pyros into the Defenders. Well, it baited the Pyros into itself, causing them to all die. Well done. I don't know if that was what Reimark intended, but I'm sure it worked better than what they wanted. Far better. That was a wonderful... Like, that was... That was beautiful. And the puppies now can come in, get a bunch of free puppies, just gray gooing themselves into a massive swarm. As puppies are wont to do. That's exactly what puppies want to do. But unfortunately, a bit too close to this Lotus. And just to point out, Lotuses do beat Pyros one-on-one. -on -one. Now, with the right... Positioning, the Pyros can actually get in a position where the Lotus can't hit them, and they can hit the Lotus. That, however, is not really the case right now. But yeah, the Puppies taking out as much as they can. Well, getting a decent chunk of Reclaim. If they can get to that Commander, that's the one thing. They need to find a good angle to get that Commander. But there isn't... Oh, there they go! That burnt down. The Lotus burnt down. They can now eat that Commander right up. And nothing can stop them. Although these Zeus's are going to try. There's been a Cloaky switch from Flipstip. A lot of Zeus is coming in, direct counter to Pyro. And the puppies actually don't survive. The puppies take out the commander bit, but not much. Oh, apparently Pyro's actually barely beat a Lotus. One on one. Oh, okay. Interesting. Good to know. I was always my experience has been that they actually lose. But I'm sure Flipsip would know. So yes, Flipsip says that they actually win, and placeholder coming in on top of the Jacks. Which is gonna nullify the Zeus outright. And the Pyro is moving right into the Defender Nest to their deaths, however, Placeholder dies for no real reason, unfortunately. And that wasn't the best black hole placement, unfortunately. Only one of the Zeus's gets captured. It will die, but that's only one Zeus getting captured. The rest of the Zeus's. Still get through, still get deep, beat the defenders a bit, but even then, not much. And that's, yeah, there isn't much to be said here. This this battle is, actually there's a lot to be said here. What am I saying? This battle is not flip Rymarks yet. Flipstep still pushing in. One of the Zeus, one Zeus left, one power left against two Jacks. Both of which are one shot away from being stunned each. But the Zeus, barely able to stun that Jack. Not able to kill it though, gets too far out of the way and does not die. And the north side being taken, this is, like I said, a bit more secure. Flipstep will have an easier time defending against this. Flipstep actually retaking the south as well. Rymark having, despite having destroyed that south, despite having made a very strong showing there, was not able to ultimately take it. They weren't able to ultimately just take all this, reclaim it, take it for themselves. 
They damaged it, but they didn't do much more than that. They had to focus on this area a bit further north, otherwise they would have lost completely. And now moderators coming in to counter the Zeus. And to counter the moderators, we have Glaives. The Glaives will be coming in later on, though. There's still quite a lot of time there. Probably about two minutes from the looks of it. How much metal is being poured in here? Okay, 20 metal is being poured in here. It'll be about 30 seconds, then. Actually, no, no, it's totally, no, it'll be about a minute. It'll be about a minute before we start getting Glaives in. The Pyros will help a bit, but not much. The Moderator should be able to destroy them in a hurry. Yeah, Moderator and Jack combined. That's going to get rid of the Pyros without issue. And the Zeus as well. Rymark, however, cannot really build any more Pyros until the Zeus are dead. Because I mentioned Zeus, they are basically a one-on-one -on -one counter against Pyros. Pyros do scale better than Zeus. Like, you need to have as many Zeus as Pyros, but if you have as many Zeus as Pyros, the Zeus win. And at the moment, that would basically happen. Rymark isn't building any more Pyros right now, and they aren't planning to. Going for Jax and Jax and Moderators, while Pyros are entirely what Flipsip is going for. Okay, apparently, Rymark pointing out that they are trying to focus on unit efficiency so that they don't all die in swarms. So, basically, they try to keep their units alive, but they don't focus as much on their expansion and economy because that means that they'd be paying less attention to their units, which means the units would die, and given that Jump Jet Factory is a very micro-heavy factory, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. I mean, the next step, I suppose, would be to try to get enough... get your APM high enough, get your muscle memory on what to do. I mean, although it's really hard to muscle memory 0k. There's a lot of situations that come up, so muscle memorying it is extremely difficult. A lot of small variations, a lot of things you have to pay attention to exactly what's going on on screen right now. But you can't just muscle memory it. But that'd be the thing to work on, is just getting more efficient with control of units so that you have more attention to be devoted to a building economy. I guess that's the next thing for Rymark. That's probably Rymark's next plan of their self-improvement. The Jacks moving away. Well, one moving away, one moving in. This is what Rymark means by efficiency. Getting the weakened one out, getting the strong one in with Jax. They have 6,000 health. They, or sorry, 5,000 health. They have a lot of time they can be in combat for. Although, nice attack from Flipstep going down around the south with Glaives. Tearing apart, trying to tear apart the armor from the bottom, but not able to do so. The monitors take him out. The, the Jax take him out. No pyros necessary. They just die. And now we have a field of reclaim. Far more open to puppies. Far more open to caretakers. Far more open to additional freakers. This is food for mostly Rymark at this point. 3,000 metal. Well, 3,000 metal and decreasing. Yeah, Rymark pulling this in. However, they only have, they have two factories. There we go. There's an air switch happening over at the north side of the map. Flips up on the other hand. Only ha They have 40 metal. They have 30 build power for factories. They really could use another caretaker as they are accessing at this point. And Rymark massively ahead militarily. They have a threefold advantage on military. Flips it from here to try to pull back. Pyro and Zeus is not working out. Dealing with Jax and Moderators, I would say Sniper to get rid of Moderators. Jax are a bit trickier. Sniper can work, but you need about three of them. It's not really worth it. It's not, not effective. Warriors would probably... No, that'd be too close. Warriors probably would be an okay strategy, though. Rockos could also work. Jacks are fairly slow moving and fairly large. The Rockos would take a while to kill them, but they'd probably be able to do it. And they'd spread out enough that the placeholders would not have as quite the same advantage they normally would. From the Jumpy Factory, hmm, kind of tough to say. Problem, oh yeah, and there are sharpshooters coming in here. So once again, I'm spec cheating from the future. It's a thing I do sometimes. But yeah, placeholders are what they're switching into. That's such a good idea. That'll stop the Jacks, leaving them wide open for stuff like Rockos or Zeus's. Yeah, I was going to say Warriors until I realized that Warriors are actually a terrible idea. Remember pointing out they lose hard against Moderators, and yes, they do. Warriors are a bad idea. That's why I said Warriors and then pulled back and changed to Rockos, because I realized Warriors would, would just die. And, yeah, Glaze on Mass apparently win. But that's where placeholders would come in, as they take the jacks out of the way, allow the glaives to tear apart the moderators from behind, and the sharpshooter as well can tear apart the moderators without too much issue. That's the best thing that, that Cloakie has going for it. And then sharpshooter just for the support. Just to get rid of the jacks, that's the main reason to use it. 
There was another moderator, but at this point, Flipstip can't really attack too hard. Rymark has a very useful position to retreat to. And a DDM coming. Wow. Doomsday Machine coming in here. Off plus 30 metal, too. That's actually kind of low. Rymark must have been on a lot of reclaim. Oh, yeah, they were. They had all this reclaim, which they can still reclaim. Probably a couple of characters. Like, two of the. One of these characters should go and reclaim. That would be perfect. That would be ideal. Like, that would be optimal timing. Because they have, right now, plus 34. That would give them to plus 44. And then there'd be plus 40 metal being pushed into the DDM, and that would be perfect. That would be... But, like, like Rymark said in chat, they optimize unit efficiency. They do not optimize their economy. They're focused to make sure all their units live, which, given that Jump Jet Factory is a very micro-focused factory, a lot of utility units, a lot of very powerful, very frail, but very expensive units, it makes sense to operate that way. Which is exactly how they operate. Oh, apparently the DDM was a bit of a mistake. I agree on the position. The position's a mistake, but the actual use of it? I don't know. How far can it hit? Oh yeah, it would need... It It needs power. It needs a pylon or two... Where's the, where's the drive? Oh yeah, there's no grid near it. It would need pylons all along here. Now, the air switch, on the other hand, that looks a bit more promising. That's actually starting to build up. There are ravens coming up from there. But nothing has actually developed from that yet. Rymark and Flipstep are totally focused on the south side of the map. Rymark appears to have forgotten the north side completely. There's actually nothing building. These... These ravens just hanging out. Not doing much. Looks like this DDM right now is just a heat ray. Heat ray defense, but right now Rymark has a really good position to jump back to. Doesn't matter though, Rymark is able to push forward and I think... This... If these sharpshooters are spotted... Is going to be game. There are three sharpshooters so far, and a fourth being built. And one of them has been spotted, gets burnt down to the ground. The second one just about gets spotted by the flames, but not quite. The flame just in position. It was like, it was one Elmo pretty much away from getting spotted. It was like, right here. Was it an Elmo? Yeah, it was like 10 Elmos. Like 10 Elmos north of getting spotted by that pyro. But at this point, Rymark has the forces to win. They have a fourfold military advantage. They have great type advantage. The fact that like, the Sharpshooter is the only thing really working out for them. And even then, Flipstep doesn't even have vision enough to be able to get it. Like, Flipstep is actually operating on radar. Yeah, and there's the radar wobbles, you can see. It's sort of... It's wobbling, and it's hard to tell where the jacks actually are. This appears to be game, though. Rymark... Pushing in with the Pyros. Flipster still has the north, still has some stuff here, but all their factors right in the center. Losing a sharpshooter. Actually taking on a nice tick placement. But even then, not enough. Ticks are not that useful, actually. The jacks are way too heavy for the ticks to kill. Like, the ticks deal 1,500 paralysis damage. Jacks have 5,000 health. Like, that wasn't even halfway paralyzed. Sorry, 2,000, but still. Less than half of the jack's health. Unless the jack has been pre-damaged. Otherwise, no. And yeah, the jacks actually don't do well against... Or sorry, do well against warriors as well, because the warriors have to get up close. So they don't have the range advantage that even Rocco's have. So that's that's kind of problematic. And in come the puppies, and now Flipstep, I think, is going to throw in the towel, realizing that there is way too much army coming in here for them to deal with. Swarm of puppies coming in here to finish the game off. That's basically it, yeah. There it goes. Throwing in the towel. The puppy killed the factory first and everything else just goes down thanks to Surrender. And a few mistakes made. I think I think the biggest mistake Flipstep made was trying too hard to take the south. The south was a very dangerous position given that Rymark was right next to it. Like, Rymark had defender's advantage on this expansion. Flipstep could have taken the north expansion early on with impunity, but the south expansion was asking for trouble was not a safe expansion to take, and I think that really sealed the game. But once Rymark took it, once Rymark destroyed most of the expansion and then went north from there and started that battle and mired Flipstep in this battle, and they were still expanding too, but they mired Flipstep in this battle where they were able to take advantage of their position, the fact that their factory is closer than Flipstep's are, like Flipstep's factory is over here, so that all this distance to go, whereas Rymark's factory was considerably closer. Rymark just put themselves in the best position possible, and Flipstep kind of walked into that. Well, she flipped up, set themselves up in Rymark's 
favor. That was a bit of a problem. Yeah, I think Flips' best thing they could have done was refocus north and then try to plow Reimark out from the north, being that Reimark was hyper-focused in the south. Like, just keep the south healthy enough, especially early on before a lot of the jacks came in. It was only a couple jacks, only a, maybe a moderator or two. Try to focus on the north, distracting Flipsip from the south, and then at that point, Flipsip would have gone, would have had to refocus, and it might have been problematic. But yeah, the the south, that was won by Reimark. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. That is going to be it for me for tonight and for this year. So thank you all for watching. Thank you for joining this year. And also, although this isn't a tournament, yeah, we, so... Last year, we had this tournament series, of which this is not included. Last one was on the 20th. But, big tournament series. Last one's on the 20th. Next year, we're going to have... We're going to continue that. Although, I'm pretty sure there's not going to be the kudos rewards. Not sure what the rewards are going to be. And I, as mentioned before, kind of want to push double elimination, or at least to try it for the first couple. I'm not sure that's going to work. If it's just going to add way too much time and become completely infeasible. Hopefully not. Hopefully, it'll work out nicely. But anyway, that's the only real news for next year. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this cast. Hope you enjoyed all the casts this year. Hope you enjoyed the tournaments this year. And all the other random stuff that I did. And I will see you next year. Which will be Saturday. Thank you once again for watching. And have a good night, everyone.